you know how you can scroll through TikTok for 3 hours without even noticing, but you can't study for 30 minutes without wanting to quit? That's not a coincidence. Your brain is releasing the same dopamine from social media that it would from cocaine. And studying can't compete. But what if I told you there's a way to rewire your brain so studying triggers that same dopamine hit? Because there is. And it's backed by actual neuroscience. See, for years I thought I was just bad at studying. I'd sit down with my books, stare at the pages, and within 10 minutes, I'd be reaching for my phone. I'd tell myself, just 5 minutes of Instagram, and 3 hours later I'd realize I got absolutely nothing done. And the worst part was, I'd feel like garbage about myself, like I was fundamentally incapable of doing what everyone else seemed to do naturally. But what nobody tells you is that your brain isn't designed to study, not naturally anyway. Your brain is designed to seek dopamine, and in today's world, studying is competing against literally billions of dollars spent engineering apps to hijack that exact system. So, let me explain what's actually happening in your head, because once you get this, you can fix it. The real story behind dopamine. First, forget what you think you know about dopamine. Everyone calls it the pleasure chemical, but that's not what it does. Dopamine isn't about feeling good, it's about wanting. It's your brain's motivation engine. It's what makes you chase rewards and repeat behaviors that worked before. So, your brain has two types of dopamine, and understanding this difference is literally game-changing. There's phasic dopamine, which is that sudden spike you get when you unlock your phone and see a notification. It's intense and immediate, and it feels amazing for like 3 seconds. Then there's tonic dopamine, which is your baseline motivation. The steady background level that determines whether you can actually sit down and do hard things without needing constant hits of excitement. So every time you scroll through TikTok or Instagram, you're flooding your brain with massive bursts of phasic dopamine. We're talking cocaine level dopamine hits, not even exaggerating. But after a while, your brain starts to protect itself. It says, whoa, this is too much stimulation, we need to protect ourselves, and reduces the number of dopamine receptors kind of like turning down the volume. So, your baseline crashes hard. Because of that, your tonic dopamine, the baseline level of dopamine drops a lot. So now, regular things, like studying or reading, don't feel exciting anymore. Because your brain got used to those strong dopamine hits from social media. It's not because you're weak. It's because your dopamine system is so depleted that normal activities literally can't produce enough dopamine to feel rewarding anymore. You're in withdrawal, basically. So here's where neuroscience gets really interesting. Scientists did this experiment with rats, and what they found was super interesting. When the rats knew a reward was coming, their brain gave them a quick spike of dopamine like a short, yes, it's happening moment. But when those rats had to work to get that reward, their dopamine stayed high the entire time they were working. So basically, your brain doesn't just release dopamine when you get the reward, it releases it while you're chasing it. That's what keeps you hooked on progress. That constant dopamine wasn't just excitement, it was motivation. The longer their dopamine stayed high, the harder those rats kept working. For you and me, this means something huge. Your brain craves completion. It craves the experience of finishing something and getting confirmation that the effort mattered. Every time you complete a small task, you get a dopamine hit, and that hit makes you want to do another one. This is why breaking studying into tiny wins is so powerful. It's not a productivity hack. It's literally how your brain is wired to learn. One practice problem solved correctly releases dopamine. One Pomodoro session completed releases dopamine. And here's the beautiful part. Research shows that when people find pleasure in completing small tasks, those behaviors become habits way faster. Like significantly faster. We're talking weeks instead of months, but you have to structure it right. Because if you're just sitting down to study for 3 hours, your brain has no idea when the reward is coming. There's no completion point, no win, no dopamine, just endless grinding, and your motivation dies. And speaking of small wins, I started using this tool called Way in Video, it's a Chrome extension and it's really helpful. It can summarize even really long lectures in seconds, so instead of sitting through a 2 hour video, I get all the key points instantly. It even highlights the most important moments in the timeline so I know exactly what to focus on. It also lets you ask questions directly about the video while watching. If there's something I don't understand, I can just type it or take a screenshot, and it gives me instant context-aware answers. It's like having a study buddy who's an expert in every subject. Another huge advantage is that it supports over 100 languages, and it works even if the video has no subtitles. So whether it's a lecture in English, Spanish, or even Japanese, 
I can still follow along and get a summary in my own language. And if I have local video files from college or tutorials, I can upload them to the Wayan Video web tool and get the same benefits, summaries, highlights, and insights without needing them on YouTube. Honestly, it makes studying way more efficient and rewarding because I'm actually completing tasks and getting those small dopamine hits that keep me motivated. And if you want to try it too, I left the link in the description, you can check it out. Let me tell you about the biggest mistakes I see people make, because I've made every single one. Mistake number one, your phone is on your desk. Even if you're not using it, just having it there drains your cognitive capacity. Your brain is constantly fighting micro-temptations, and that burns through your willpower faster than anything else. The moment you hit a difficult concept, your reward system screams for that easy phasic dopamine hit. So put your phone in another room, physically, not on silent. Mistake number two, no clear wins. If you sit down without defining what done looks like, your brain never gets the satisfaction of completion. You just exist in this vague state of, I should be studying more, forever. Before you start, decide exactly what counts as finished. Maybe it's 25 minutes of focused work. Maybe it's five practice problems. Whatever it is, make it concrete. Mistake number three, waiting to feel motivated before you start. This is backwards. You don't study when you're motivated. You become motivated through studying. Motivation is a result, not a prerequisite. This is why starting is everything. Once you begin and complete even one small task, the dopamine from that win creates motivation for the next one. Mistake number four, studying after you've already flooded your dopamine system. If you spend an hour on social media, then try to study, you're starting from a massive dopamine deficit. Your baseline is crashed. Studying feels unbearable. The solution isn't willpower, it's sequencing. Save the high dopamine activities for after studying, not before. And mistake number five, no celebration. This sounds silly, but when you finish a study session and just immediately move on, you're missing a massive opportunity. Your brain needs to associate studying with reward. Even a small celebration, a fist pump, a specific phrase you say, a favorite snack, cements that dopamine pathway. Over time, your brain starts craving studying because it knows celebration is coming. All right, so here's how you actually structure this in real life. Week one is about protecting your baseline. This is the foundation everything else builds on. When you wake up, do not touch your phone for 90 minutes. I know that sounds extreme, but your dopamine baseline is most vulnerable in the morning. If you flood it with Instagram right away, you're starting the day in a deficit. Instead, use that time for breakfast, maybe some light exercise, planning your day, whatever. Just no phone. Within a week, you'll notice studying feels way less impossible. Also, in week one, pick one specific place to study. A desk, a library corner, a coffee shop table. Doesn't matter. What matters is consistency. Your brain learns to enter study mode automatically in that context and create a list of small rewarding activities that take under 15 minutes. Be specific, not relax, but watch my favorite show or walk around the block. You'll need this list later. Week two is when you start the Pomodoro structure. If you haven't heard of this, it's beautifully simple. 25 minutes of focused work, then a five minute break. That's it. Start with just two Pomodoros per session. Don't try to be a hero and do eight right away. The magic here is that 25 minutes aligns with your brain's natural focus rhythms. Your attention naturally peaks for about 20 to 30 minutes before it needs a reset. So you're actually working with your biology, not against it, and track every completed Pomodoro. Check marks on paper, an app, whatever. Just make it visible. Seeing your progress accumulate is itself a dopamine trigger. I use a simple piece of paper with boxes, and every time I finish a Pomodoro, I get to fill one in. It's weirdly satisfying. After each Pomodoro, take a real break but not scrolling, actually move your body. Walk, stretch, get water. This refreshes your attention systems and prevents burnout. Week three is where you add variability. This is key because if every reward is the same, your brain gets bored. So after each Pomodoro, randomly pick something from your reward list. Sometimes it's a one minute reward, sometimes five minutes, sometimes 15. The unpredictability keeps your dopamine system engaged. This is the same principle that makes gambling addictive, except we're using it for good. Also add 10 to 15 minutes of exercise before your main study session. 
a walk, light jog, whatever. Exercise increases dopamine release by 30 to 40% throughout your entire reward center and the effect lasts for hours. I started doing this and it legitimately changed everything. Suddenly studying didn't feel like dragging myself through mud anymore. By week four, you're optimizing. You've been tracking what works, so now you customize. Maybe you realize you focus best in the morning. Maybe certain types of rewards work better than others. Maybe you need background noise. Maybe you need silence. This is your personal dopamine formula. And aim for 80% consistency, not 100. Perfection is a trap. You'll miss days, and that's fine. The goal is building a system your brain actually wants to engage with. So here's why dopamine-based routines succeed where motivation alone fails. They're designed around how your brain actually works, not how you think you should work. Willpower is limited. It decreases throughout the day, especially after you make decisions. By evening, willpower is basically gone, which is why studying at night feels impossible. But dopamine-based routines don't rely on willpower. They create structures where studying requires minimal effort because the environment, the rewards, and the small wins generate neurochemical motivation automatically. The real secret is sustainability. Most study advice creates intense effort for three to five days, then complete burnout. You flame out but a properly structured dopamine routine feels sustainable forever because it's working with your neurobiology instead of fighting it. I wish someone had explained this to me years ago. I spent so long thinking I was fundamentally broken that everyone else had some willpower gene I was missing. But that was never the problem. The problem was I was competing against engineered addiction with nothing but raw effort. Once I understood dopamine, everything clicked. Studying stopped being this impossible mountain and started feeling like something my brain actually wanted to do. Not because I suddenly became disciplined, but because I structured my environment and routine to make studying the most dopaminergic thing available. So if you've been struggling, if you've been beating yourself up for not having enough discipline, stop. You're not broken. You just need to understand the game you're actually playing. And once you do, studying becomes less about forcing yourself and more about setting up conditions where your brain naturally craves the work. That's the routine. That's the system. Build it. Stick with it for four weeks and watch what happens. Your brain will rewire itself. Studying won't feel like punishment anymore. It'll feel like progress, and progress is addictive in the best possible way. If this video helped you understand yourself a little better, then please take just a second to subscribe. We put a lot of time, research, and heart into making videos like this, and your support genuinely helps us keep going. Every new subscriber helps this channel reach more people who are struggling the same way you once did. So subscribe. It means a lot more than you think.